first they started fighting a little bit, and then it got worse and worse. We an argument over the smallest thing, and then as the years progressed, it just started to, the small things started to aggravate uh, each other. Like them fighting in the hallway. I was only like two or three years old when that happened. So it kind of scared me. They've never had got along, never. As a matter of fact, all my life I've been, you know, you know, just just watching them argue all the time. They would never talk to each other on the phone. They couldn't hold a civil conversation ever. I get scared and I just leave them because I don't want to hear them. Nobody likes to hear their parents fight. What it does to kids is just it, it pushes them away. Really, it really does. I felt like really scared. Sometimes I feel sad. The way I feel, I, I wouldn't want anybody else to feel like that. Because it's just it's too painful. It hurts, but I can't explain the hurting in words, so just the tip of me and I can't get it out. It's just like, like in my heart, knife is being stabbed. And Sometimes I'd be just yelled at because they were angry at each other. And I mean, I felt hurt that I was being yelled at for something that they couldn't get along like about. And I just didn't think it was fair. I don't like what you're doing. Um, I don't, I don't, you know, what you're going through, I understand, but you arguing in front of, um, my stuff and my little sister is not cool, and we need to change that. I just wanted to stop. You don't know who that is? That's baby. Is that you? This is delicious. We're going to go all the way around this time. I'm Dante, and this is my room. This is my main thinking place. It's the only place I have to be free. It's my own place, like um, where nothing can bother me, where I don't hear any negative stuff or, or I don't have to deal with anything. It's just, it's just my own place. No, oh, I was a good-looking guy. <laughs> my name is Lisa L. Alexander. I'm a single parent. I have a son, Dante Daniel. He's 10 years old. His father is James Daniel. As you and your dad coming from church, look at your shades. We've never been married, and we agreed to have uh, me as the primary parent. And we both agreed to raise Dante the best that we can. I'm Dante's dad. I, I guess like all parents, I just want the best for him. We have a good time together. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. You need a Dante normally visits me every other weekend. It started off, it was real good. The relationship with his mom now is a little bit shaky. We start having some problems with visitation. Dante would express his opinions to his father and if they made sense to me I would bag Dante up and really that's when the problem started. These noodles are delicious. A C? No, not a C. A plus plus. His father still does not see him for who he is and that's where our conflicts come from. He didn't want to go over there which is why I'm <laughs> I'm in the situation I'm in. Sometimes when I go to pick him up, and I would be at the door, and I could tell he was right in the middle. And I was just hoping that she wouldn't put it on him, but she would say, do you want to go with him? It's not like, Dante, your dad is here. You're scheduled to be with him. Or, preferably, he should have been ready. His, his, his little bag should have been packed. But it's almost like nobody knew I was coming until I showed up at the door. And then leave the decision on him. Do you want to go with him? Well, that's kind of putting me down. I can understand how his father felt shortchanged about not interacting in his life. But it was also frustrating for me to get his father to understand that this is where the problem is. Eventually, I talked to his mom and said, you know, I, you know, what? W I wish we could work this thing out, and if not, I might have to go to court. And the Kool-Aid's in the fridge, okay? It's hard to say how he feels, but it does bother him, you know. Sometimes he'll stay in his room, 
He doesn't want to go outside and play and ride his bike. He just gets with fun, and I don't know what's going through his mind. He's struggling with it right now. Is it globbing? Yes. I can't stand that feeling when you paint mine. <laughs> the best part of being a dad is probably seeing my daughter smile. Her mother always was the one that uh, they had makeup time together. Anything to do with the girly girl type stuff, I did a little bit of it already. Now, not to the extent I do now. This is the hardest one. <laughs> so it takes a lot of patience for me. The hardest thing, I, because of the situation of, with the divorce and everything, is the to discipline your child uh, when you know she's going through a lot already. I felt really sad and really mad that my mom and dad were fighting. At one point, I didn't realize how dysfunctional we were. The arguing and, uh, you know, everything, everything that went on. I mostly try to keep my mind off it and just, like, ride my bike or something. She only knows what is normal from what she has been around and what she has seen. She's, she's a child. Uh, she knows normal from her parents. She knows normal from us. Uh, and it, she needs to understand that yelling and screaming uh, when you have a problem uh, is not the best way to handle things. I tell you, she learned the wrong way from me and her mother. Just because her mother and daddy had problems doesn't mean she she has to have the problems. Uh, and it's just gonna it's gonna take time for her to get over it. Me and her mother are not getting back together, and that's that. And I don't want to hurt my child. I know that's what she wants. It's hard for me when she hurts. This is my graduation picture right here. I graduated in 04. Look, Lanae. Remember that picture? Who was that? I was a baby. You was a baby? You was not even zero years old yet. You were a little baby. Yeah. Who was that behind, Who was that holding you right there? You. My dad was holding you when you was a little baby. Did you cry a lot? Yeah. yeah. Well, me being a dad, you know, I sacrificed a lot. It's really hard. I mean, I had to sacrifice football at one point, and that's what I loved doing. My friends, I had to sacrifice that. I can't go out. Before, I would mostly go and do things like with my friends, go to the mall, go shopping. How much is it? But now, I just do stuff with my daughter now instead of with my friends. How much is the snake? The one of the biggest sacrifices I lost was my family. I ended up staying here with no family, so now I'm... Trying to raise an ad, like I said, the best way I can. And it's hard for me because I'm kind of stuck in the middle where, like, I have him over here and he's saying, well, we are her parents and we need to do it this way. And then my parents are saying, well, you know, it's okay. I'm a grandparent, so I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And then I have her and I want to try to do, you know, what she, what I think she wants. And so then it's kind of hard. I just get fed up sometimes because it's like, when I'm telling her something, when, when it's time for her to come live with me in my own place, it's going to be like, she's going to be so used to, uh, her grandparents or mom sticking up her saying, yeah, yeah, she's going to be so used to that. And then when she's with me, it's going to be what I say, you know. Sometimes she'll choose my side or sometimes she'll say, mom, you need to tell dad sorry. And I, I get tired of arguing about that. Sometimes I just feel like moving, going on my own and just be able myself. So I get tired of going through that all the time, so. She knows whenever we get into it and she's like, <laughs> she's like, what's wrong or be nice or something like that. So she can definitely tell. Jay, dinner's ready. Come and eat. My name's Rubiana. I have two children. Juliana is nine and a half and David is three and a half and... Unfortunately, they don't share the same dad. My relationship with my daughter's dad is, I wish could be better. The relationship with her father is just, I wish he could disappear. We clash over everything. The way 
Um, she combs her hair, the way she dresses, the way she eats, the friends she keeps, the friends I keep, um, everything. I mean, nothing I do is right. When they fight, I feel that they're going to split and I'm never going to see one again. I'm going to live with the other. I just wish that my mom and my dad would just come together and forget all those bad, ugly times. I believe Juliana is aware because she'll start getting on me about the relationship that I have with her dad, the way I respond, and I try to be as polite and mature about it and not have her in it, but it's, it's, it's hard sometimes, very hard. My relationship with my son's dad is almost perfect. Well, Ruby and I, we were never married, but we did live together for... Well, it was like almost five years. David was born, probably our last year we were together. I do have primary custody of David, um, but like I said earlier, we live pretty close together. So David still spends a lot of time with his mom. You know, we try to make all the decisions together as far as what concerns David, his school, his daycares. We still keep each other's personal life as private as possible between the both of us, except for when it comes to the kids. Uh, at first, it was pretty difficult. It was a lot to learn. I think the most important thing that dads need to know is that if they choose not to spend time with their child, that's something that, that they're going to regret. I don't think the children need to see the grown-ups fighting over, over them. It hurts them while they're growing up. She's going to come for anything. I, I put her first. So, I mean, whatever she needs, if I buy something and I know that she needs something, I take that back and get the money back and go spend it on what she needs because it's not about me anymore. It's about her. You know, David's never seen us argue, never seen us raise our voices at each other. I mean, there's no need to. We don't engage in each other's personal aspects of each other's lives. Because as the children get older, they can understand more. And I think... The things, if you bash the other side, they can see through that. When me and her mother talk, the, we do not dig into each other's personal lives. We, the subject matter is our daughter. That, that is the reason for the phone call. That is the discussion that takes place. That is, that is what we talk about. It just makes sense to get along, think about what's best for the child, and not try to win all the battles. I was one of those people, I was like, just do it, or why don't you just do it like this? And so I had to practice myself saying, okay, you have to ask, and you have to be nice, and you, you know, you can't just expect for somebody to do it just because you want them to. We communicate about what's going on with David. Um, he's not ever late um, to picking him up, you know. He's, he's just, he's great. I have to work with his father on some things. I do have to compromise. You know, it's a little bit of both of us in this kid, not just you, not just me. So the things that we have conflict on, we do have to compromise. We change days sometimes or change weekends if something comes up, a, you know, a family event or something like that. Um, we try to accommodate each other quite a bit. We have the understanding that 6 o'clock in the evening needs to be picked up, 6 o'clock Sunday that afternoon. The, you know, the end of the weekend needs to be picked up. James is consistent with that. If I apologize and, and tell her I'm sorry for what I've done, no matter what it is, it works out the situation. I mean, she feels more comfortable of being around me and talking to me, and I feel better about myself knowing that I don't have to stress on me or I don't have to come home and hear this and, you know, argue. So, yeah, apologizing a big, it plays a big part in a relationship. I'm proud of his father for the man who he is. He's a very patient man. She's a great mom, she really is. Hey, Dante, yes. you know the helicopter we were talking about earlier? Oh, yeah, I remember playing with that. I found one, remember? As a result of the court order, we got the visitation back pretty good. I still think the best answer is when parents work together. We're going to work together to raise this kid that we've made together. My mom, she, she's trying her best to make everything better. In fact, she's helping it out a lot. It's like I bounce ideas around with him and his father, you know, to try to make them both understand each other and how they're going to have to work and get along in some type of way. Sometimes uh, it seems like he doesn't understand that 
I've been places where he is now, and I just want to do what's best for him. And I try not to fuss, but sometimes I guess I do. Okay, guys, we ready to go? I started a little thing with Dante. Day? When I take him home, I say, you know, Dante, we had a good weekend, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got anything you want to talk about? Let's talk about it. I love children. I love Dante, and I want the best for him. So, how do I look? She's adjusted extremely well, and she knows she's very much loved. I wanted her to understand <laughs> that this is not her fault. What happened previous to me and her mom separating uh, was not her fault. She's not in the dysfunctional part of the relationship anymore. Uh, she's not caught in the middle anymore. She does not see all that uh, that she saw during the marriage. We try to have an amicable relationship uh, for her. Now, it's not always been that way at, at the beginning of the separation. It was very emotional. and. Uh, but as time has gone on, uh, it's gotten a lot better, and we've made, we, that was the ground rule we set up. When we, when we talk to each other, we talk about Hannah. What's important to me about being a dad is, I <laughs> one, that my daughter knows that I love her. That she is the most special thing in my life. I'll tell you what, Dad's getting a lot better. I've come to realize that, I mean, arguing and stuff is really... It's a big, it's a big thing in a relationship when you, especially when you have a kid. Yeah. Hey guys, this is the life. You have kids. I usually get in my car, and I just drive off and just ride around, and think about what, what part I played in that, that situation, and could I, been more lenient towards, you know, what was going on. So, I just ride in my car and I come back. I talk with her mom. I talk with her, and I just tell them how I feel, and everything works out from there. I really don't argue with them too much. A lot of people really don't realize that once you have a kid, it's not about you anymore. You have to think about her first more than anything. We have to learn from our own problems and mistakes, what we do, and then try to teach her not to do that. She's a boss. She's the boss. Things that I've learned to minimize is... Um, to be patient and put my feet in his shoes. He's not always going to be on time. Um, his cell phone's not always going to be charged. Um, I've just learned to be easygoing and more patient. When I'm calm with her dad and I don't argue with him, then she comes back in a better mood and, and not as aggressive with me. You like the book? Yes. My relationship with David's dad is nearly perfect. Um, we take each other's um, feelings into consideration. So I think he's learned a lot from the way me and his mother communicate and I think it, it reflects a lot in his daycare and play at school. He gets along with everybody. He's been very good. Oh, David's everything to me. <laughs> he really is. Um, you know, he's my buddy. He's my friend. You know, and he's also my son. I love him very much. Thank you. Don't use the child to get back at the other the other person don't use a child just don't um, belittle talk bad about the other parent to the child because the child needs to just have fun just be a child not try to get the two back together or make peace just let the child be a child They don't get in as many fights as they used to. They can like discuss decisions themselves without having to like ask me to be the go-between. So I mean, it's a lot better than it used to be. They learn how to talk because my the divorce that I went through was so long ago that they learn how to talk without actually having an argument. Well, there was a new student orientation, and my dad came, and he um, talked really nice to my mom, and so did my mom to my dad. I felt happy about that. Think about the kids and, you know, the family and how it's going to affect everyone. If you want to argue, you can go somewhere else, or just, you know, don't don't show, don't show that kid what, what, what you're going through. They can't fight, but just go to your room, please, because I don't want to hear it. I would probably tell them that 
they should they should apologize and just start over. Even if your family is still is um separated like in different houses, they're still a part of your family. Just let them know you're gonna be there for him no matter what. Rain or shine through hell, you're gonna be you're gonna be with him. And that's all he needs. Make sure that you're not arguing and upsetting them because you never know what's gonna go through their mind, you know. That's what I think should happen. It's gut-wrenching. I mean, every time I drop her off, it's it's hard. And that's one reason why I came to the class, to to try to better the conflict between me and, me and her her mother. Right now, she thinks she she's the reason why we got divorced. We've been divorced for seven since she was two months old. You know, so she feels she's at blame. We have to work through this. We're the adults. She's the child. She gets to be a child. We have to be the adults. And that means we have to work with each other. A lot of times we say certain things that are really too mature for their ears. They don't really need to be involved in the details of what's going on, even what we feel. We need to find another place to vent and not vent that with our children. What up? I gotta catch you, okay? Oh, I ain't gotta cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 